Okay, welcome to the very last talk by Magnus Larsson, Social Login with Spring. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Spring Social. And he, since it's only a 15 minutes talk, he asked if you could take the questions afterwards. Okay, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> you can wait with the applause until afterwards to see if it's worth it. Uh, okay, my name is uh, Magnus Larsson. I'm from uh, Calista Enterprise. We are a consultancy company with uh, offices here in Stockholm and in uh, Gothenburg. And uh, I would like to make a talk about uh, the Spring Social project and how it can be used to enable uh, social login in uh, Java-based uh, web applications. Uh, before I start the talk, uh, I would like to see uh, how many of you uh, have an opinion of uh, social login. Do, do, do you know what it is about? Hands up, please. Great, you're on the right talk. <laughs> How many of you are aware of uh, the OAuth uh, protocol? Great. Uh, anyone that actually tried out the, the Spring Social project? Or a few? Okay, great. You're not allowed to ask any questions. <laughs> you are, of course. Um, okay, so first, uh, what is uh, uh, Social Login about? Uh, to me, it's, it's about to get rid of those... Um, uh, login dialogues that we have in, in all, all uh, web applications that, that depend on that the user performs a self-registration of, of their, um, their user accounts. And in, instead, uh, delegate the authentication process uh, using the, the user's already existing accounts within the various uh, social networks that exist uh, out there. And the, and the clear benefit uh, for, for users, uh, if we do that, is that they don't have to go through this painful registration process and they don't need to, to keep track of yet uh, another password. And for us as web application developers, we can delegate the whole implementation when it comes to, to user registration and authentication processes uh, to, to network providers, social network providers that we trust. Okay? And the um, uh, foundation for this to work is, is a protocol called uh, OAuth. Uh, and it handles um, basically uh, authorization, but implicitly by that also authentication. And typically it works something like this. You have a web application which gives a, a, a user uh, possibilities to, to use uh, his account in some uh, social network. In this, in this example, the user clicks on the LinkedIn button. C can you see? Is it possible to, to see the user? The, oh, uh, there are spaces uh, up front if you have problems. Uh, and the web application uh, redirects the user to LinkedIn. LinkedIn presents uh, a dialogue with the traditional login information, but also it requests for consent from the user to, to, to give uh, the user's profile information to, to the web application. And if, every, in, if everything works uh, okay, uh, LinkedIn will uh, redirect the user back to, to the web application. And the web application can get access to the uh, user's profile and create a local account based on that. And, and then, uh, then the user is ready, go, ready to go in, in using uh, the website's functionality. Okay, so uh, Spring Social, what's that? It's a project within the Spring IO family. And they claim that they, they can be used to connect your Spring application with the software to service API providers, such as Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, to me, they have uh, four capabilities, main capabilities, that, that, that simplifies first, um, of course, using the OAuth protocol, both version one and version two. Uh, secondly, uh, Spring Social Project can help us to, to create uh, local user accounts and connect them to, to the uh, accounts um, that the user used in the social networks. And, and also automate that uh, aut automate persistence of that information in in, uh, in a database. It can also be used together with uh, Spring Security so to set up a secure environment for the social login. And uh, last, uh, it, it can also be, uh, be helpful to define Java bindings for the APIs that the various uh, network providers uh, supply. So you don't have to make uh, uh, homegrown uh, REST calls and, and uh, that, that complies with the OAuth specification. Uh, Spring Social is also highly extensible uh, in, in, in the core products of the say or project. It supports uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and GitHub, but there are some uh, 30 
community projects that add support for a long list of other uh, social network providers and actually also some non-social providers, for example, uh, Salesforce. So it's quite interesting. Um, I don't say anything more about that. Instead, I would like to, to say a few words about the, the, the sample in, uh, application that I uh, showed on the previous slide. Uh, it's something that we have put together to, to uh, visualize uh, how Spring Social can be can be used, so it contains a very simple login page with a number of alternatives for the user. And if the login works fine, uh, a user account is created automatically in, in the application and, uh, and, uh, and the main page is shown uh, with some profile information and then some text field uh, where the user can enter some data that is related to the user. You, you can see it as an oversimplified mock of, of a shopping cart or something uh, like that just to visualize uh, how everything fits together. And um, uh, I don't have time now to go through the details of how it's constructed, but we have written a blog that you can uh, read through it. And we also have a GitHub repository with a source code if you want to see, uh, get into all the details. Uh, some highlights. Um, we use what is called implicit login, and that means that the the local user account within the web app is automatically created once uh, the user for the first time is authenticated. Uh, that means that we don't have any local passwords or something like that. We totally rely on, on the authentication done by the social network. And we also use um, the, the, the strongest, um, from a security perspective, strongest flow within OAuth, uh, the authorization code grant flow. Uh, and that means that the all the whole OAuth communication is taken place within the uh, web app on the, on the web server, and that is the most secure alternative. And as you can see in red, the only information that passes the web browser, and that is unsecure, is, is something called an authentication code. It can be seen as a one-time password with a very short time-to-live period. And it is immediately consumed by the web app uh, to create the, the actual access token that then later on is used to, to, um, to get information on behalf of the user. And this access token is never revealed in the web browser, so, so, so it, it cannot be stolen uh, by some uh, uh, um, strange JavaScript code or whatever you have in the web browser. And if, you, if you're interested in, in how OAuth works, um, Jakob Jankov have an excellent tutorial uh, that you can read through. I can recommend that one on the URL there. Uh, so I thought I'd make a, a short demonstration to see how, how everything uh, fits together from a user perspective. Uh, let's see, I have to finish PowerPoint or else um, screen resolution gets mixed up. Um, Okay, so here I have the, the login page. Here's where the user is redirected when it tries to access the website. And we can start to uh, say that it comes in a user that wants to authenticate using his uh, already existing Facebook account. So now the user is re redirected to Facebook, and Facebook wants to log in the user as, as uh, normal, as usual. Something like that. The user is logged in, and now Facebook asks the user to give permission for Facebook to give out information about the user's profile to, to the web application, the user consent. This is standard uh, functionality of OAuth. And as a user, I, I uh, say OK to that, and I'm redirected back to, to the web application that now can get hold of my profile information and create a local user account automatically. And now I have this um, mock data field here. I can enter something that uh, you can think of as being uh, something like a shopping cart or whatever. So I say uh, Facebook um, user data. And I store it in the database. OK, so I, now I log out. Uh, now I want to pretend to be another user, on, preferably on, on another computer, but I don't have, I only have one computer, so I will use it. I reuse it. And now I want to, as a, as a total other user, authenticate using my LinkedIn account. So I click on the LinkedIn account. Now I get to LinkedIn, and they have a, a slightly different uh, dialogue. 
they both um, have, they have combined authentication and authorization information in one dialogue to, to make a few dialogues. So I log in and at the same time I allow access to my profile information for this web application. And I get back and I'm logged in using a LinkedIn uh, account. And I can, as this second user, enter some user-specific information in the database. And I log out again. And now, now if I uh, pretend to be the first user again, coming back, and I log in again, uh, now I'm already logged in in Facebook in the browser, uh, or I have already given consent uh, to f that fast. Well, that was impressive. <laughs> so I should not be, be forced to give consent again, and I should see my information that I entered uh, earlier on. So I click on the Facebook button, and I'm, already, uh, I'm immediately directed uh, to, to the main page, and I can see my Facebook user data. That's how it fits together. Okay. Here it is. So now I just would like to wrap up with some um, uh, security um, perspectives. Uh, so login is uh, all about uh, security, so it's, of course, very important. Um, when it comes to OAuth, they have a number of uh, different flows that you can use, and it depends on how secure the environment is where, where you use uh, the, the OAuth flows. And, and uh, we strongly uh, recommend to, to run OAuth uh, communication within a web server. Uh, then you can use the, 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 the most secure uh, flow, code grant flow, and you can, you can um, keep the access tokens uh, very secure and safely. If you can't do that, you can, of course, also run the OAuth flow uh, within the browser, in the JavaScript, or in a mobile environment, uh, mobile device, but then you're in a, in a much less secure environment, and you can't rely on those access tokens uh, at all uh, to the same extent, meaning that the time to live for the access tokens typically are lower, meaning that the user has to be, give its user consent much more frequent compared to if you use a code grant flow. But there is an option, and you have to choose. And then since we are on the web, we have to, take, uh, we have to consider all, all the security threats that are on, uh, known on the web. And if you go through the OWASP uh, top 10 list, uh, basically every, every threat uh, applies here as well. Uh, the most important to remember is that you have to secure the HTTPS, uh, and this is correctly used. OAuth 2 totally depends on that you have a secure a protocol communication over HTTPS. It has none of message-based security or anything like that built in. So it's really, really important. And then you have the usual suspects. Injection, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery that you have to take care of. And spoof me attacks and, and secure direct object references that happens if you are not, if you not take care of, what, uh, of, of how you express your, your keys and, and identities and references if you use them in clear text instead of uh, use, uh, UIDs or something abstract, uh, they can very easily be, be guessed and uh, you can be attacked <coughs> that way. And if you find this hard to handle, uh, you should not do it yourself. Instead, uh, we recommend to use um, two colleagues to, to, to the Spring Social project, and that's Spring Security and Spring MVC projects. They have a lot of uh, functionality built in if they're used correctly. They can prevent many of those uh, uh, attacks. Summary, use social login to relieve the, the users from this painful registration process and keeping track of, uh, of uh, extra passwords, and delegate the user registration and authentication to OWASP providers such as social networks. You can use Spring Social to simplify the work, and, and preferably combine with Spring Security to, to provide a secure environment. And we have this blog with information if you're interested, and um, we are producing new blogs and new presentations on, on the subject con continuously, and if you want to follow us on Twitter or RSS, you have the URLs there. Um, maybe one minute. Um, maybe some question, but if you come up with other questions, you can for sure uh, mail me on that mail address. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the question about, is about the, the logout uh, uh, phase. Uh, when I clicked log out on the application, I was logged out from the application. I was not logged out from my Facebook account. So the Facebook account is still there, and, and, and you have to handle that. You, you, you could think... Uh, there is no, no, uh, no standard way. But, but uh, most probably, if, if, if the social network provider exposes an API, you could do it that way, if you have the user's consent to log out the user. But it's not part of OAuth. I, I, I would recommend that the... Okay, <laughs> should I repeat again? <laughs> I'm repeat this, the last question. Okay, so the question is now about testability. How, how can you run uh, autom automated tests uh, for this type of functionality? You don't want to be depending on that you have access to the social networks, basically. Uh, it's, it's, it's very possible to, uh, uh, feasible to, to write a mock using the Spring Social. Uh, most probably there already exists one. In, in the test suite that the uh, Spring Social project uh, depends on. But otherwise, you can write one easily yourself. Okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>